shipping's this way. Shipping and receiving, that's what I'm looking for. Never been here before. Oh, Lord. There's some stacks. Those are on big trucks, big trailers. Go in here and see what they've got to say. Can I go over this? Stuff like that I usually ask just to be sure because some people are finickier than others about stuff. <laughs> I had a guy back in behind me. Right, so I had to cut around. Okay, so I'm going up here, the second driveway, parking lot for building A, and my load should be in there with the paperwork in the toolbox. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, second driveway. first one so it must be in this yard maybe I don't know it's like it probably is out in there somewhere second like driveway said so there's probably nobody up here it's just a parking lot okay I see good man it's one of these little ones I hope it's one of these little ones oh I hope I hope I hope 6942. So now I gotta look for load numbers. Where do they put their load numbers? I don't see load numbers. Huh. I'm gonna stop here and ask this guy. Maybe he'll know how to figure it out. When in doubt, we'll ask. Okay, so he's saying that it's on the paperwork, so I checked the two there. Neither one of them are it. I'm glad he knew, because I sure as hell didn't know. Okay, check these out. Got to be here somewhere, right? bitty load. Well, it's not little bitty, but it's two two trailers. It's two trailer load. So that's what I was hoping for. Let's see if I can get over here under it. much room to maneuver. Oh, 
I'll bring you out in your scene. See what's going on. This is the stack. I'm so tickled. This is two little trailers. Well, not little. They're long. They're heavy, I'm sure. This is what I'm getting. I need to pull up a little more. Just. Now comes the fun part. Cranking this down, I'm gonna to have to pull up a little more too. Hang on. Just kind of finesse these. I'm gonna go see if I can get this. See what you're saying. All right, sorry about that. This is my load. I'm trying to get over the ball. And I'm having to finesse it a little bit.
so I'm doing here, I'm crossing my safety chains. I hope you can see this. I've got a breakaway there I need to attach. Okay, they got that. Alright. Oh, man. So when I'm doing up in here, I get my fingers out of it. I'm going to cut this. Put that down. Oh, there's another one on it. I hate that stuff. I have to crawl up there and do it. Crawling onto this truck bed should be easy as long-legged as I am, but it's just, just high enough that it's not that easy. Okay. Where is my... Sorry. I might be editing this, I think. This is a carabiner. Now I gotta get up in here and get this electrical wire out. So hang on. It's easier said than done. I well, they felt the need to put that second zip tie on it. I hate zip ties. I'm just gonna plug this one into the back of the truck. I've got a port in there to plug in up in front on the left side for my lights and brakes, but I'm gonna try this back here first. It's just easier to reach. This is a really low riding trailer. Which is okay, um, I lost the camera there for a little while. I've got my semi straps, so I'm gonna tighten this up. Then the other side, I gotta tighten those up too, and then I gotta check my lugs. So I'm gonna let this keep running if it'll keep going. It's raining out here now. And I'm putting extra strap across the dovetails on the back so I don't see any pins holding them just in case.
Okay, so I don't know if you noticed that I tightened my front strap first, then my back strap, and then everything in between. I'm gonna rest my back here, man, it hurts. Um, my next step is to go bungee cord all these together, the strap ends. And once I get that done, I'll be digging out my torque wrench and checking the lugs on the wheels. The thing's got three tires on both sides three axles, so I'm going to be checking a lot of lugs. I'm still happy that it's a little load. <laughs> Just taking a long time to get it all done. Whew. Man. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on rubber gloves to do my bungees. It's hard to do with regular gloves on. It's wet out here and I don't want to get all filthy. It kind of quit raining for the moment. I'm going to take this thing off. It's like a sauna. Gotta have it to stay dry, but man, I'm cooking in here. And it's not hot out here by any means, it's in the 60s. So I'm gonna do this and I'll dig out my torque wrench and do the lugs. It just takes a while, it's not, not a fast process. It, under best of conditions. It's even slower when it's raining. When your skin's damp, the damn gloves want to stick to you. Makes it even more fun. I'm sure everybody who has to wear gloves for work <laughs> understands that one.
Got all my bungees on. Now I'm gonna go around and get my torque wrench and check these lugs. Then all I'll have to left, have left to check is the lights and the brakes once I get these lugs checked. Okay. Okay, got it turned around. We're gonna check these lights and I'll check the brake lights. Now I don't have temporary tags. We've got lights. I check all my marker lights. Every, every light on the trailer has to work. Let's see, you see that? Yeah. Another light. Here's another light. Make sure these jacks are locked in the up position. That one is. I don't like that handle sticking out. I don't think much of that design. Okay, got my hazards and my blinkers. Same difference. I don't even see a place to put a license plate on this trailer. That might be an issue. And they, as far as I know, they didn't give me a temp tag. And there's nobody there to ask, evidently. So you just pick these up and do all this stuff and take them at face value. That's what you get. I do have an in-transit tag, but it's not meant for utility trailers. It's meant for um, RVs. So I feel um, like I can use it. Sorry about that. Anyway, as I was saying before, I got so rudely interrupted. Um, my in-transit tag is only for RVs. So I feel like I can use it on horse trailers with living quarters because that's basically an RV with a horse trailer attached. If you want to get real technical about it. The reason I'm making mud pies here is they left this up on the trailer and as I'm going down the road that's going to dry out if it doesn't keep raining and all those little rocks in there are going to be things that fling off and hit people's windshields. So I'll get as much of that off there as I can. Oh no. I shall, oh I got mud all over me, damn it. That's awesome, I got a muddy shirt. God, some days you ought to just stay in damn bed. This is one of them for me. Let's see if I can clean it up once I get back in the truck. Okay. Same thing on the other side. They left a pile of dirt on it. Their guys should be doing this if they were really thinking about what they're stacking them up for. They can get it off there a lot easier when it's dry than I can get it off there when it's mud. I'm just gonna finish my walk around here. So I know my lights are good. I don't know about the brake lights yet. I gotta test them. Okay, um, I'm checking my brake lights. I've got a, my, uh, my tablet cover stuck down in there holding my brake down. Yes, we've got brake lights, okay. I think I'm gonna go up here and turn my other lights off and see. Seem like those bottom ones should be brighter. We'll go back and take another look. Don't know what I'm gonna do if they don't. <laughs> I'll be pissed. And they don't. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Figure it out. One of the things I do, if I have any problem with the lights, I go plug it into the other receptacle up on the gooseneck. 
sometimes that makes a difference sometimes not now this truck bed is soaking wet <laughs> naturally I can't really get up here the back way because that gooseneck is so um, low so I'm going to try and make myself a deal so I don't have to get any wetter than I already am I'm already pretty there's still mud on my um, camera mount up here. All right. This took exponentially longer than I thought it would. I've been here um, 909, 1025, almost an hour and a half. But I'm picking up from a brand new place. I don't know anything about them. I'm checking everything I can check. Um, because I'll never fall for that BS again after the the dangerous place I hauled for. So far everything's been good here so I'm gonna bump my trailer brakes up to 10 and I'm just gonna pinch them If they're working or not okay what I usually do if I can't really tell if they're working is I back up a few times because some of these brakes I think adjust when it's backing oh I got nothing okay try my settings here if I don't have brakes I'm not going to take the load can't I got one ticket for doing that, and it, I'll never do that again either. I didn't realize that I had a brake issue. Okay, settings. I'll quit. Settings. Trailer brake. Trailer one, use this trailer. Yes, done. Trailer brake type. These may be heavy electric over hydraulics. So let's try that setting and see what we got. All right, let's try this again. See if I got any brakes. Thought I heard them. Yep. Okay, I'm going to pull it on out of here. They ought to move these cars out of here. That's kind of jamming me up. Or back their trailers up another 20 feet or so. We'll try these trailer brakes again. Make sure. Probably too, this stuff is wet and slippery, so I'm not they may not grab. Okay, so I'm going to back up with them and try backing a little bit. I do not like those handles hanging out on the sides. We are good. So here we go. Okay, this camera's starting to annoy me. <laughs> Keeps going off, turning itself off. I don't know what's going on with it. So anyway, I, I got these trailers picked up. I'm on the road. I've checked, 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 checked again on the brakes. They're working, but they're weak. They're not real strong brakes. That's why I was having trouble telling them. I got out on the asphalt and I checked them again and they're, you know, they're working, but I'm not real impressed with them. Um, but that's what I've got to work with. They are working, so they're legal. And they, I've checked it, stopping at the stop sign and then stopping out on the asphalt a couple times. So we're good. I'm going to go ahead and take this up. The other thing, they didn't give me any kind of a temporary tag. And... So I don't know about this manufacturer. I'm, I'm the jury's out on it. I was kind of looking at their um, information 
they've got mixed reviews so I have no I'm not gonna judge their trailers I have no idea I'm just hauling it <laughs> but what I judge them on is how well prepped they are um, for drivers and they get about maybe a C plus they're not the worst they're not the best they're not in the top five, I would say, but they're they're not horrible. I'm just not super impressed um, for a couple of reasons. One is they had no yardsman there um, to talk to or anything. Just they just throw you out there on your own, which you know that's all fine and good. But there's some things you might want to ask about a load or something. You need to have somebody there who can answer questions. There was no such person there. In fact, there was no person there. The guy wasn't lying, it was just a parking lot. And uh, so that's a mark against them in my book as a driver picking up from them. So if I'd had an issue um, on something, I don't know who I would have addressed it with because there was nobody there to talk to about it. Um, so that's, that's a problem. But I will give them high marks on um, lug, lug nets. All the lug nets were properly torqued. And it, I got to looking at the paperwork after I went around and checked them all. They had signed off on the paperwork that that was the case. I don't buy that for a minute. I check them anyway, um, especially when there's nobody around um, to do it in front of you, to check them in front of you. So I'll check them anyway. But that was, that's a good mark on their side. They actually have that on their paperwork. They've checked, checked them and signed off on them. Um, I like the way they stacked it. They stacked it well. The loads distributed. They got plenty of bracing in between the trailers and they've got all the, they, they actually took the tires off the top trailer and laid them underneath the trailer. So that trailer's riding on its tires, but they're laying sideways. So I won't have the strap issues um, with this load that I have with the ones that are up on their tires upright with the air in the tires and they're bouncing around. So that's a big plus. I like the way they stack the load. I, I think I'll raise them up to a B plus maybe because they're, they're not that, the stuff that they didn't do isn't that critical as the stuff that they did do. So I'm gonna raise them up to a B plus. So really the two things that, the three things they could have done better, they didn't give me a temp tag. And they should have given me a temporary tag. I'm crossing state lines with it. They know this, or they should know it. A lot of these manufacturers down in here don't care. It's a pain in their butt and they just won't do it. And it's not all that hard to do. The ones that do it, like big techs, they've got a great system because you don't even have to ask. They give you a temp tag or they will ask you if you want a temp tag if you're crossing a state line. And they just give you the damn temp tag and they'll put it on for you and everything. So this trailer doesn't even have a place for me to hang my temporary tag, um, my in transit tag. So if I, if I get in trouble in Missouri, I'm not worried about Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, I'm fine. They don't issue um, tags on trailers in Oklahoma like this. So I'm, I'm fine there. And I've got a letter in my um, book stating that Oklahoma doesn't issue tags. So I should be okay, but if for some reason they give me trouble in Missouri, then you know that would, that would cause me a little heartburn with, with this outfit because they didn't provide me with a temporary tag. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I give them a, let's call it a B minus. I don't want to go as high as a B plus because that temp tag is a big deal to me. Um, some people don't care, but you know, I don't want anything to attract the attention of a cop who wants to give out a, a DOT ticket to me. I, I just don't want to do anything that gives them an easy reason to pull me over. Even though they don't really need a reason to pull you over when you're when you're hauling commercial, they can pull you over whenever they want to for any reason or no reason, just to inspect you. 
but I don't want to give them any, any easy ammunition, put it that way. But that's a real common thing with some of these trailer places. They don't think about the temporary tag thing or they don't want to mess with it because, you know, they have to go to a little bit of effort for it. So, anyway, we'll, we'll just call it, um, call it a B minus. They're not as, they're not as bad as I thought they were because the way they stack the load and everything, I really appreciated that. The tires are aired up, you know, they look good. Um, the lugs were all, they all torqued correctly. All 48 of them. The triple axle trailer on the bottom, heavy triple axle trailer, eight lugs per tire. So, <laughs> yeah, that took a little while. I think the camera quit on me about halfway through, but I'll try and splice all this together and maybe speed up the slow parts so it's easier to watch. Okay, good. Just checking them brakes. I don't want any more tickets for not having brakes. That was a bad deal. Really bad deal for me. The one time I've been inspected, I was hauling a, a damn PJ trailer and the brakes weren't functioning on it and I didn't know it. So I got inspected and he put me out of service, put the trailer out of service. I got to leave and go to a motel for the night, but I had to come back and figure it out. So um, the guys I work with, they came over and looked at it. They weren't far from where I got inspected at. We got it, we got it going, but I finally figured out what it was. It was uh, short on the trailer. It, it wasn't even what the guys thought it was, but it was a short on the trailer that blew my fuse. So when I picked it up, they were working, and then they weren't. So I'm, I'm tempted to check that fuse again just to make sure, um, just to make myself feel a little better. I may do that up the road here a ways when I get a wide spot where I can get completely off the road and just go ahead and check that or even just replace it because Bill was explaining to me that fuses can break down cumulatively over time and they can weaken and then it'll be like you get something going on and it'll be like the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, I don't know how all that stuff works. He does. But it might be time to change that fuse out just in case so I don't have a problem up the road, which I think I will do as soon as I get someplace where it's wide enough. For me to do it and I'm having to get out my dark sunglasses it's getting all sunny and bright out here now man I'm gonna earn my money on this one just prepping it to go was a job job and a half like a drowned rat. <laughs> I got pretty wet. Four point six a cat they have to go there. Road's too busy and too skinny to be dropped, to be bringing these trailers down. It's 
people want to do 65 or 70 through here and it is a 55 zone I think that might be 60 but, so this this feels like a pretty easy load I'm not getting a bunch of wind drag I'm getting 10 miles to the gallon plus and that may or may not go down once I get on the highway I don't know we'll see but so far so good I'm just so relieved it's a little stack even though it took me longer it probably took me longer to get this one ready to go than it takes me at Big Tex because the yardsman helps me out at Big Tex cuts me down to about I don't know 35 or 40 minutes picking up there but this took a full hour and a half <laughs> I'm just trying to get back to Paris so I can get around to the highway I need to get on to go up through Oklahoma. And I'm still quite a ways from Paris. So I'm 458 miles from my delivery point. And I'll get up into Missouri for sure. I may stop at Nevada, Missouri. There's a motel there that's real easy to deal with and they've got a big parking lot that I can park this in and I've, I stayed there once before and the room was surprisingly clean and nice I mean it's an old looking motel but they've gone in and redone it it's America's best value in some of those are really good and some of them are really bad but I think they're going through and trying to clean them all up and that one they have cleaned up really nicely so I'll probably stay there tonight I think it's an hour and a half or so out away from where I'll be delivering these and that way I can get up and go about eight ish hit the road about eight and uh, get up there and deliver right after nine so that's probably my plan I think and I've got about seven eighths of a tank of fuel I'll probably top that off on the Indian Turnpike up in Oklahoma So I'm still running on relatively cheap fuel I bought in Louisiana last night. I couldn't believe that. I just lucked out and got in there and found some for 485 a gallon. Everything around here is 529, 519 to 529 that I that I saw coming through town this morning. I think. So then when I get done tomorrow dropping these off, which I hope that their yardsman there will crank this thing up, or I hope their tractor or backhoe or whatever they got, or, or a forklift or whatever is working so they can just lift this off the truck. Cause that crank on this trailer was really sticky and tight. And I was just letting it down. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna get it back off of there. Letting it down was, don't you move. Ah. People scare the crap out of me sometimes. He was looking right at me and he kept coming. What the hell was that? I have no idea what the hell that was. Maybe it was a turtle. It was moving really slow and I couldn't tell. I have no idea. Okay, I'm ready to get off of this road. <laughs> this road of weird weird creatures and and people scaring me, thinking they're gonna pop out in front of me. I really don't want anybody popping out in front of me. I prefer that they'd not. Okay, and somewhere up here I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna go ahead and change this fuse, whether it needs it or not just be on the safe side it's been a while since I changed it I've hauled a lot of trailers since then
and it's real easy for me to do since I know which fuse it is and I've got my fuses in here in the console and my little pliers in here in the console it's just like a three minute deal I just need a wide spot wide enough spot I guess that's probably wide enough let's do it here get it done get off the road enough but not too much I don't want to go off in that ditch I don't want that trailer in that ditch okay so fuses there's my needle nose needle nose it's supposed to be in here the hell should be in here okay I need those all right I don't know where my needle nose are that kind of annoys me but these will work sufficiently and it's gonna be that fuse it's a 20 amp all right, I'm gonna go up here and do this real quick. I don't know why this camera keeps shutting itself off. It's starting to annoy me. So everything checked out okay. My trailer brakes are working. I feel better having a new fuse in there. I don't think the old one was blown. <clears throat> But it won't hurt to have the new one in it anyway. <laughs> this is pulling really easy. mileage looks like it's going to be somewhere around 10 ish so far that could change everything's staying where it's supposed to I think don't have any strap issues all the straps are tight as a drum that's the nice thing about not having uh, wheels on the top trailer it's not bouncing around so it's not messing with my straps I should not have any strap issues at all on this they're very short um, strap runs you know, it's just from that top rail to the bottom rail so it's not very stretched out I did have to call out one of my straps I, it was one of my newer ones too it had a cut on it so I called it out I'll have to cut some more this weekend maybe throw four or five new ones in there but I've still got 13 good ones so I've got plenty to get this load and then get the other stack um, from Missouri and take it down to Dallas hopefully it'll be a little stack too usually the ones going from dealer to dealer are short well like two trailers usually um, I'm hoping that's what it'll be because I'm over the big stacks. I'm going to have to go get a big stack next week in Pennsylvania. Which is um, why Bill's looking for me at auxiliary fuel tanks. Last time I was out there, I had to pay $6 a gallon. I don't ever want to do that again if I don't absolutely have to. So if I've got 100 gallon tank on the back I'm sure I'm carrying extra weight I'm carrying an extra seven or eight hundred pounds on the back of the truck uh, if I'm carrying that full that tank full but I think the trade-off is you know that I can fill it up with four dollars and eighty cents a gallon fuel or whatever it is back here 
and not have to buy six dollar a gallon fuel when I get out there. So we'll we'll see how all that goes. Oh, this is kind of a funky messed up. Uh oh, uh oh. Shit. They got a curb back there that's cut too tight for the trailer. So I knew I was going to drop down in there and it was full of water. And it did. Luckily it wasn't like deep. It was just, but I had to slow down because I didn't want to drop it in there and break the axle. That would have been bad. But it wasn't as bad as it looked. But I couldn't tell because there was water in it. But I couldn't avoid it because there was no room. That's just how they've got that. Why they've got that stupid curb there where your trailer tracks, I have no idea. It's a dumb damn idea. Dangerous. So I'm glad I saw it in time to mitigate the, the situation. Okay. I don't know what this guy's doing. If it's a male person or what. Mail carriers around here do that. They'll run with their flashers on on the side of the road. They don't necessarily have any markings on them either. Man, my shirt is just filthy. <laughs> Mud. I'm going to have to roll it up, not show it. I'm going to have to take it off later, I guess. Oh well, I'll probably just roll it up and take it off tonight. I'm going to retire it for this trip until it gets good washing and bleaching. <clears throat> Poor Franken shirt. North to Hugo, that's where I'm going. North to Hugo. Hugo's in Oklahoma. I want the outside turning lane, so I'm going to come over here. I'm making a left turn, so I want to be in this outside lane, so I got a more open turn with this trailer. It's a pretty long trailer. How long is that? I wonder. It's like a 32. That's a 35. And a 40. Hmm. Oh, okay, so the heavy one's up on top. The 40 foot's on top. No, the 40 foot's on the bottom. It's a car hauler. Triple axle. Okay. So the one on the bottom is a 7,500 pound trailer. The one on top's a 9,300 pound trailer. The one on top's got a pinnel hook on it. I didn't even notice that. Pinnel hook is a different way of attaching it to your vehicle. I think a lot of military stuff is hitched up with pintles. Oh, that guy's got a problem. I don't know if you can see that. Roll it back and look. His trailer was not attached over the ball. It looked like, I don't know what was holding it up there. That looked weird. Unless he had some kind of a weird double ball thing. That didn't look right. <laughs> I'm going to have to review that in, in the when I edit this. Because <clears throat> that looked bad. That looked plumb wrong. I'm making this turn as wide as I can make it, but I'm still... That trailer's long now. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. So yeah, that hotel I was talking about, that America's the Best Value Inn, up there is going to be the place for me tonight because I don't have to worry about parking there. they got a giant parking lot. And it's inexpensive. It's not a $100 motel. <coughs> it's more like a... 70 or 80 dollar motel I guess so I was going up this road when the wheels came off that one load that I picked up from the dangerous place that shall remain unnamed literally two two tires came off my back axle I was towing a, a big stack a stack of three heavy trailers Kind of like what I had yesterday that I hauled down to Louisiana and they just 
didn't tighten any of the lug nuts on it. And me being a dumbass, I didn't check them because I was used to picking up trailers and not having any issues. <laughs> so I, I check them all now because of that. I don't trust anybody anymore. If I don't see them tighten them, I, I check them myself, make sure they're good. Like I did today, 48 lug nuts, I counted them as I was tightening them. Anyway, it was in this vicinity that the wheels came off. I'll try and tell you when we get to the exact spot. That was the most surreal type of thing. There was nothing I could do. You know, just get over off the road. Because I, I came over a rise and then down a little bit. And then I saw a tire go by me. I'm like, what the hell? What is that? So I kind of started pulling over anyway because I didn't know what was going on. And then I saw the other tire go by and go in front of me. And then I heard the axle dragging behind me. So I was lucky enough I got over on the side of the road. As you can see here, it's pretty good shoulder. So I got way over. And the tire, the first tire that came off went across these lanes of traffic, over across the other lanes of traffic, and landed in a sand pile down here. The second tire, the inner tire, came off, rolled past my truck, um, off to the right, off the road down to the right, and I'll show you where it went. But, needless to say, that was a lesson learned. You know, I do make mistakes. I'm only human, and I screw things up sometimes. I try not to make the same mistake twice. So that's that's all. That's, sometimes that's the best you can do. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a mistake. It was stupid. You shouldn't have done it. But just don't do it again. Take that as a learning moment, <laughs> as they say, and just don't do that kind of dumb thing again. So I was pretty close to the Red River when it happened, actually. I was up here quite a ways. So I, I'd hauled it from out, not quite as far out as I've hauled these, but I was back up a ways when I hauled it down through here. So, I mean, it stayed together for a while, but it was like half an hour, maybe. And then I had to sit and wait three hours for them to send out one of their guys to, to bring new tires and a new axle out. An axle hub. So it scrubbed the axle hub on the asphalt, so it screwed that up. Um, one of the tires a guy got from across the street and brought to me. The other one, I followed it down into the creek, but I, I wasn't big enough to drag it back up out of there. So it was still there. I told them where it was. They didn't care. They just left it. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. That was an incident that's embedded in my brain. That's why it's worth it to me to go out there in the rain and check 48 damn lugs individually to make sure that they're correctly torqued. So I don't ever have that happen again. And that's why I also say that it's a very bad, bad thing when the wheels come off. Because that's kind of a saying, oh, all the wheels came off. Well, when that happens, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> it's not good. It's worse than you might think. From the sounds of it, it doesn't sound so bad until you see, see it in action. Then it can be really, really bad. So this is pulling really well. I'm probably going to get around, well, between 8 and 9 miles to the gallon, I guess. I'm getting 9.9 .9 right now. That's, that's great. Anything I can get over eight is, is icing on the cake. Because these are big, heavy steel trailers. They're just not sit up real high. Your sticker looks like it's trying to come off, too. Their decal. I don't know. <laughs> don't know.
like I'm, I'm trying not to judge their trailers because I don't really know. I mean, I can I can say something about PJs and Big Texas because I've owned those trailers and used them. So unless I've owned them and used them, I'm not going to judge them. I'm a little nervous. I'm getting up here to where the wheels came off, and I just want to get beyond this. I want to get across the Red River into Oklahoma. I mean, I know those lug nuts are good on this one because I tested each and every one. So it's something that kind of sticks with you. And it, this being a, a brand I haven't hauled before, so I, I went above and beyond on the checking it over. <laughs> Probably checked it over more than more than I needed to between the, the lugs and the brakes and all that business. Okay, that makes sense to me now that that bottom trailer is a car hauler because it's got um, over the three axles, it's got fenders coming up over them. If it was a flat trailer, it'd be up above that, be flat and not have any fenders. I knew there was something different about it when I was hooking things up back there, when I was tying them together. Okay, so I'm thinking right in here is where I started having trouble with those the day the wheels came off. It was pretty far up here, pretty close to the Red River. I got some paperwork to mail, but I'm not going to mail it with these trailers on. I'll have to do it tomorrow on the way to the other side of Missouri or do it when I get home. I'll probably just do it when I get home now. Okay, yeah, this is, I think right here is where it started happening, by these crepe myrtles in the middle in the median, because I was by some, and the first tire came off, and I saw it go, or it may have been up here a ways, anyway, it came off and I saw it go. It might be this next batch of crepe myrtles down here. Hard to remember details like that because at the time, you know, you're not paying attention to that as much as what's going on. You're like, oh no. <laughs> or as I was thinking, oh shit. Um, yeah, was, that was an oh shit moment for sure. Right now I'm looking for the sand pile that the one ended up in across the road. That'll tell me more, I think. I think it's down here a ways, yeah. So I know it's past the it's past all these buildings. I know this isn't important to you, but it's important to me, so <laughs> I'm trying to remember where this exactly happened. I want to say it was right here somewhere. You know, 
I sat on the side of the road there for like four or five hours before it was all fixed and I could take off again. I was doing the same same trip I'm doing today. I was going from that factory up to Missouri to the same place to deliver those trailers. So it was the, the same exact trip except just a different starting place. I clearly don't know what the hell I'm talking about as far as where it started. It's on down here. It's got to be on down here because I was almost at the Red River. It seems to me like I could see the Red River Bridge and when I followed that one tire down into the creek, the one that rolled past me, it was going into a creek that ran down into the Red River. So it had to have been on up here a ways. I'm going to have to edit all this uncertainty out. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not. Okay, it had to be right in here. Right here is where the first one came off. Went across the highway, over there into a pile of sand somewhere. Right up there, I think. The guy fished it out for me. He saw it come off. The other one came off and rolled past me and went right down in there. I pulled over right here. So I was just off the Red River Bridge because we're just fixing to go into Oklahoma and crossing the Red River. So right down in there, that tire's still in that creek, I'm sure. Because they didn't want to go get it and I wasn't going to do it. So hello, Oklahoma. Um, right down in mileage. 172. Two, seven, eight, two. Oklahoma. Okay, we got a way station up here. And a little bit. A little bit of rough road here. It's concrete roads, I swear. For some reason, having trailers on <clears throat> makes these rough roads feel a lot rougher. rattles me. <clears throat> it's hard to even get a drink of coffee. Everything's rattling around so hard. This one usually is. Oklahoma is one of the few states that has their way stations open anymore. A lot of places just don't even bother. Hopefully they'll just run me through. You can see what it's like to go through an Oklahoma way station with me. These ones are little old way stations. They don't have the big inspection centers like they got. Oh. Sorry, trying to sne sneeze. <laughs> they don't have the fancy inspection bay that they've got on I-35. <clears throat> Holy cow's roads are up. Rough enough. Try 
turn off headlights. Okay, mine are off. So what we'll do is we'll go in here, we'll stop at this scale, let this track get cleared. And I'll go over it slowly. So you can get my weight. Oh, what that guy was doing. So I just pull up here to the cone and stop. Make sure all my wheels are on the scale. I've got a green light, so I'm going to go. A bunch of utility poles. I don't even think they were actually weighing anybody. They were just waving people through. I don't know. They didn't inspect me. That's the only thing I care about, really. I'm glad when they just let me go. Get in and go. I firmly believe the only reason I got inspected that night up on I-35 is it was a Saturday night, late Saturday night, and I was just pulling that 140-foot PJ. If I was taking it, I was going home with it, and then I was going to deliver it over to Odessa the Monday after I had just picked it up. And I think that the DOT inspector saw that trailer in my truck and he thought I was a hotshot driver and they are cracking down on hot shots really hard have been for several years they hate hot shots for some reason so he inspected me thinking I was a hot shot and I told him I'm not a hot shot I'm a trailer transporter this is not my trailer it's my cargo I'm taking this you know from point A to point B I'm getting paid to move this trailer it's not my trailer but he hammered me anyway. It's all right. I got through it. I survived it. It cost me 250 bucks. And it pissed me off to no end, as you can tell. <laughs> but for some reason, he decided he didn't like me, so he pretty much threw the book at me as hard as he could. And he hit me with it too. <laughs> and I didn't say anything stupid like, I wouldn't do anything like that, I'm ex-cop. <laughs> I'm sure if I said that to any of these guys, that would solicit, uh, well, so what? It's not like you can trade that with like currency, you know. road is in freaking terrible shape. <clears throat> it's as bad as a bypass around Shreveport. Every bit is bad, maybe worse. But it's either use this road or go clear back over to I-35 and add two hours to my trip. I don't want to do that. So pretty soon up here, I'll turn and get on the Indian Nation Turnpike. And I'll run that clear up. 
to McAllister. I'll probably get off of it at McAllister. Because I don't want to go up through Tulsa. I'd rather go up through Muskogee. There's no reason to go through Tulsa. Tulsa sucks to try and drive through. Too much traffic. Too many stoplights. Too many people. Because the turnpike ends up at Henrietta. So if you, if you get off there at Henrietta, you either need to cut over to the turnpike going up to Muskogee. Or I don't know what else you would do. So I can circumvent all that by just turning off at Muskogee to begin with. <laughs> and get just on regular roads. Everything in here is rattling and banging around. My logbooks just looks like a flower blowing in the wind on its little stem here. I have to hold on to it because it's like flopping around. Oh my gosh. Can you see how much we're bouncing? I mean, that's that damn concrete road that's all buckled. Like every five or six feet, there's a buckle in it. Worst idea for roads ever, concrete. off this rough son of a bitch here. Oh my gosh. That's really bad. So bad it's making me cuss. So I'm trying not to be, I'm not trying to, or I'm trying not to swear so much <laughs> when I'm videoing. Oh, this feels so much better. This asphalt is smooth like butter. What an improvement. Too bad it's not going to last very long. We'll get right back in the bouncy stuff here momentarily. I'm afraid. All right. So this is US-271. Uh, here we go again. If I was going home instead of going to Missouri, <clears throat> I'd take this next exit and get on Highway 70 and cut across through Durant and Kingston and Medill. But I'm not going home, so. Oh my God, this road is so bad. This is insane.
Now 271 is going to turn into the Indian Turnpike here shortly. I think this is the last free exit. Off of it. Not sure. last free exit. He goes east of us. Antlers is north of us and Durant is west of us. We'll be going up by Antlers. Okay, here we go. Ah, on the toll road. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm glad this is smooth. What a relief. It's wonderful, as a matter of fact. I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm looking, all my straps are staying tight as they were when I strapped them. But I don't have any forces working against me on this one. Because I don't have tires down on the axle on the top trailer, there's no bouncing back there. What I've got basically is a tire sandwich with two trailers for the bread. <laughs> and the tires are laying on their sides. So there's none of that bouncing around and flopping up and down of the top trailer. loosen the straps. Right now I'm getting 9.8 miles to the gallon. I expect that to go down a little bit. I haven't been driving 70 till now. Speed limit up here is 75. Let's we'll see what the truck wants to do. Seems to like 70 pretty well. And we're we're getting into the mountainous area of Oklahoma. So between here and McAllister, we're going to be up and down a lot of hills, and some of them are really steep some pretty good mountains out in here. Right lane closed half a mile. Okay. Dang it. I like the right lane. <laughs> but I want to stay in the right lane. It's smooth. Got to merge, and of course, I got somebody over here crowding me. Slower down here. Some 
places they don't slow down much for construction zones. They do in Oklahoma. Texas, sometimes you go through them and you can't even tell that it's a construction zone speed-wise. Just speeding past the barrels. But here it's a little different. I'm really watching the, the back of this trailer because on the back end, I think I showed you when I was doing a walk around to look at the lights. There are two jacks on the back of this bottom trailer that are locked up into the upright position, but the handles on them are sticking straight out to the sides. So they're sticking out, oh, four or five inches wider than the widest part of the trailer. That's on either side. I really don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, if I get just a little too close to anything, that could be a problem for those handles. And I've got a little bit of a rise over here in the median. You can see where people have run off the road there and run over the grass. Well, those handles are down pretty low. So theoretically, they could get tangled up over there, like here, where it's kind of a drop off. So that's a design feature I'm not real crazy about, to be honest. They're chewing up the old asphalt there. This is new construction since the last time I was through here. They got quite a bit of that done already. It's probably been a month, maybe, since I was through here. Like it was a muddy mess up here last night, all the rain. I don't know why he's going so slow, but he knows something I don't know, evidently. Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, cool. So I'm looking down the back of this trailer as I'm going, and I'm trying to keep my tire, which I can actually see the trailer tires on this one because it's got the fender. I'm trying to keep it just on the inside edge of that yellow stripe to stay over, as far as I can stay from those cones. But I also don't want to get too far over and get into the grass because it's muddy. That and that. Um, jack handle sticking out back there. I don't want to stab that into that median. So anyway, that's where I'm, I'm keeping my back tire right on the inside edge of that yellow stripe. I can't remember if the um, turnpike service plaza is before or after McAllister. I might have to do my feeling and stuff off of the turnpike or wait until I get up on the, the far end of the Turner Turnpike up past Tulsa, which I will be cutting up on that up through uh, Muskogee.
So when I when I get that area, I'll fuel up and pick up some snacks. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of food to eat with me, but I'm going to want something better for supper tonight, probably. I kind of have to plan ahead a little bit because I don't eat out at restaurants much. If I stop anywhere, I usually stop at Starbucks and get egg bites. The, the way I'm trying to eat, I'm, I'm not eating any bread. I gave up bread entirely. I haven't had bread for, I don't know, months. Long time. Because... I don't like the way wheat affects me. The last thing I had made out of wheat was some saltine crackers like three weeks ago, four, man, man, longer than that, six weeks ago maybe. And they just caused a big spike in my blood pressure of all things. Like, that's weird. So evidently, I'm better off not eating that stuff to begin with. But I don't exactly pick out the most nutritious stuff when I'm on the road to eat either. Because if I'm not eating egg bites, which actually are pretty good, they're, you know, there's no, they're ketogenic, put it that way. It's eggs, bacon, and cheese. But aside from that, pretty much everything, that beef jerky, everything else I eat on the road is probably not that great for me. Some nuts. But I eat beef jerky, nuts, and cheese exclusively for like, I don't know, six months. And it didn't seem to help my weight situation any. Too many nuts. Nuts are fattening. And when you narrow down your food choices that much, you kind of, <laughs> I don't know, it's difficult to try and figure out what the hell to do. Okay, 52 miles till I get off the turnpike. That makes sense. We're 69 at McAllister. Yep. Okay. So I'll hop off the uh, turnpike on the south end of McAllister and go around it on their bypass there. And it's real difficult to get into any of the businesses around McAllister right now between the road construction and the service roads. If you got trailers on, you might as well forget about it. Colorado plate. Look at that. I always wanted to get one of those Colorado bumper stickers that says native on it. It has like the license plate design. Stick it on my truck. Because I am Colorado native. <laughs> I never did. I don't know why. Colorado kind of got overrun with non-natives and they made it pretty much a miserable place to try and live politically. That's probably all I need to say about that. <laughs> Since I'm staying away from political topics. load to pull. I don't have much wind drag. Doing real comfortably at 70 up and down these hills. It's 
still pulling 9.8 to the gallon. That's good. I mean, as heavy as this load is, I'm surprised we're doing that well. So just, it reconfirms my belief that a lot of your fuel mileage issues are caused by wind drag as opposed to weight, because this actually weighs probably as much or more than the stack I'll be going to get in Pennsylvania. If it's like the same stack I brought back out of there a week ago. And I couldn't get over eight or nine miles to the gallon with it, with any consistency. And a lot of the time it was around seven, so. But that was wind drag because it had the real high necks on it way up above my truck and a lot bigger components I guess probably than these steel trailers since they were aluminum even though it was a lighter load it was costing me a lot more in fuel as will the next one I'm sure <laughs> when I go get it this next week I should say if I go get it next week I'm planning on it I think they're planning for me too. We'll see what it actually happens. Between now and Monday, a lot can happen. Okay, I'm gonna get over in the left lane because I've got a pike pass. I'm gonna slow down. Gotta go through the toll gate. They've got different ways of doing these toll gates. on the H.E. Bailey, which is the closest turnpike to me. The, there's a fast lane that goes around the right side, the outside of it, and their toll booths are inside. Here, it's just the opposite. I'm not sure why. back over here to the right side to the slow lane. So I run in the slow lane as much as I can, you know, unless I gotta pass somebody. It's the whole idea of it. They finally put a law in here in Oklahoma a few years ago that the left lane is for passing only. Up until then people were camping out in the fast lane and causing all kinds of traffic issues. They actually still do. Some people do. They still haven't got the memo. <laughs> they, they haven't got a ticket either, evidently, because they're still doing it. But that left lane is intended for a, as a passing lane, not as a continual lane to run in. Especially if there are people behind you that want to go faster than you want to go. But what I see a lot of is people who sit over there and run at a certain speed and refuse to move forcing everybody else to slow down and I think they're doing that on purpose I think it's kind of a uh, I wish I was a cop complex I don't like how fast everybody's going so I'm going to sit over here and block them which is a really dumb thing to do but people do it there's really no other explanation for why they would just sit in the fast lane doing you know 65 in the 70 zone or whatever like they just disapprove of the actual speed limit <laughs> <laughs> that kind of reminds me of up in Colorado oh it's been 20 years ago now probably at least they changed the speed limits on all those mountain roads from 55 up to 65 and we had what I called speed protesters there are people who like driving 55 through there and by God they weren't going to drive one mile an hour faster <clears throat> even though the, the speed limit was raised so you could be going along pretty good and then you get behind one of those guys on a twisty turning mountain road and you couldn't get around them it's kind of a similar thing you know my way is the best way so you're gonna do it my way because <laughs> I can make you We're in 
the mountains now. It's pretty mountainy here. It's a pretty steep hill. I know, people don't think there's mountains in Oklahoma, but there are. There are mountains in a lot of states where you don't really think of mountains being. Pretty much from here up through Missouri is all mountainous. And then once you get across the Mississippi River, out east, pretty much everything um, from oh, Tennessee up through Kentucky and over into Virginia and all that's all mountains. Pennsylvania, a lot of Pennsylvania's mountainous. Of course, New England, there's a lot of them up there. But yep, we got them in Oklahoma too. It's just, people don't realize it if they don't come to this part of the state. This is the southeast corner of the state. over on the other side to the southwest corner or beyond us. I mean, 30 miles pretty much due west of my house is the Wichita Mountains. They're just not very big mountains. But they, you know, the Mount Scott sticks up pretty high. You can go up on top of it and you can see it's, it's a high point, real high point. It just doesn't look like Rocky Mountains or whatever, but it's pretty, pretty good. It's not a hill. It's bigger than a hill. I cannot get the temperature right. I'm still kind of wet. So it's warming up outside. It's 68 degrees out there now. I think the humidity is quite a bit less up here than it was down there. So it's feeling a lot cooler in the truck here. Maybe I'll turn some heat on. I think I will. <laughs> Put the heat on for a little bit. There we go. Yeah, it feels kind of good. Well, I'm going to shut this off and listen to radio for a while. Probably get back on here this afternoon when I get close to where I'm stopping for the night. In the meantime, I'm just going to cruise. I don't have any, I'm not in any hurry. I can't deliver it tonight anyway, so. Should be good. Well, thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you next trip, or next part of this trip, anyway. See you later.